Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So we uh, now start as promised the quasi Newton methods, uh, we will see the homeworks later on. Now if you uh, go back and remember your Newton's method that we have discussed, then in Newton's method what we had essentially wanted to say is that instead of taking the, instead of looking at the problem the function f itself at the point x k current iterate, I look at a quadratic approximation of that f. And then I try to study the problem by trying to minimize that quadratic approximation and that gives rise to what is called the quasi uh, sorry the Newton equation, Newton iteration which I write as uh, So, this is as you know we recall that this is what is called the Newton iteration. Now, I can look at it from a very different point of view. What essentially I want while I am trying to solve an unconstant optimization problem is to solve this equation that is find some x star in R n such that the gradient of f x star is equal to 0. A more general problem can be that take a function from R n to R n, find x star or x bar such that f of x bar maps to the 0 vector. Now, this how do I do because we have we already know that equation solving you, you learn about Newton's iteration essentially when you try to learn in calculus how to uh, solve functions f, if you have a function from r to r say f tilde then you want to have f tilde x equal to 0. So, you want to find the x here. So, there you will learn about Newton or Newton Raphson method whatever you want to call. Now, how do the question is how do for if you are when n is strictly bigger than 1 the question of course, is how to find solution of this equation. Now, essentially I can now apply the same logic here, okay. but only the important thing in optimization is to know that every iteration the function objective function value decreases that we will fix up by fixing a descent direction. Now, if I have Suppose I start with a point x naught. So, x naught is my starting point, start point, starting point. Suppose f x naught is not equal to 0, then I must move from x naught to some x 1. How do I do that? So, I can write the Taylor's expansion for functions from R n to R n vector valued functions. So, f of x 1 the next iteration f of x naught plus the Jacobian mapping which I am writing at as f dash x naught which actually if you if you want to be true truly erudite and everything is nice you should write this as Jacobian of f at x naught. So, I am just writing this as f dash x naught and then I have 
x 1 minus x 0. So, I have made a Taylor's expansion, but it is not exactly a Taylor's expansion because I have ignored the error term. There is some error term here which I am ignoring. L suppose I can do this that is if x 1 is somewhere very near to x 0 possibly I can write uh, it in, in this form here this is the matrix. Now, technically this should be a number between uh, there should be a vector between x 1 and x 0, but uh, okay, we are just or we should just briefly write if you do not want to write equality you just can think of that I can write f x 1 approximately I can write it as this. Now, once you can do that then you observe that now I want that x 1 to be my solution that. So, if x 1 f of x 1 is equal to 0 it would imply that we can approximately and hence we can just for getting the approximation for a certain time you can have this expression which will lead to provided you can make a inverse of this matrix. Now, just put f capital F as your gradient of f and then you get the Newton iteration then you get the Newton iteration. So, now what I do that okay, if I can do this sort of thing when I want to move to the case where I need not have these to be positive definite at every x k then I try to do something else that else is as follows. Now, instead of writing f x 1 in terms of the this derivative I bring in some b k which is a positive definite matrix and I write because here I would have really needed uh, here in this case I would have really needed uh, a positive definite uh, matrix. So, I can replace this by a positive definite matrix. So, if I had a positive definite matrix then if f, f dash x naught was positive definite is P d then it is invertible you have got you get this right. And then it is very important that now what I do I will make this sort of approximation. So, what I have is some p d matrix into is an n cross n symmetric p d matrix. Is an n cross n symmetric p d matrix positive definite matrix. So, once I do that it is very very important to note the following now I can write suppose my x 1 is my if f x 1 is equal to 0 then I can write x 1 minus x naught minus b naught inverse the f here. So, this is a very good scheme a quasi Newton scheme a quasi Newton scheme for solve equation solving. So, I have replaced the because here I needed an invertibility which I cannot guarantee of the Jacobian every time. So, I so at every moment now when I go from B naught I at every iteration when I going from x 1 to x 2 I have to have a new B 1 which will be used to make the jump from x 1 to x 2. So, it is a quasi Newton scheme for equation solving.
Now, if you look at that, uh, what happens is that I can write more, more general thing as x k minus x k plus 1 minus x k is minus b k inverse f of x k. But I am making a too much of an assumption that I will take a p d matrix. Suppose I do not take a p d matrix, then I can write this thing in general as this is one way of writing the thing. So, essentially I can now make a more uh, nicer thing, because I have already assumed that x k plus 1 is 0 at f x k plus 1, it, if it is 0 then I get this equation. So, it does not harm if I write this as because this is 0. So, from x k to x k plus 1 I come with the presumption that possibly x k plus 1 is a solution. So, if not then it, it would not have a 0 value. So, this would be the iteration that I will use. So, now if I put capital F as grad F, what I have here is that if I take some B, some other matrix which I do not bother, then okay, it could be when I a positive definite matrix and then you can put a b k that is it when you could get this iteration scheme which is the quasi Newton scheme. So, there is something I can write, I can write this as grad f x k plus 1 minus grad f x k. This is sometimes called the second equation or the quasi Newton equation. So, if I put s k as x k plus 1 minus x k and y k as grad f x k plus 1 minus grad f x k, then I can write this thing can be now written as b k s k equal to y k. Now, actually the quasi Newton iteration for the optimization problem can be written as because I am expecting this, I will update from B 0 to B 1 in such a way that all the uh, B k's would be positive definite and so you will have an inverse. Sometimes we need not bother about even computing the inverse, we can take an approximation of the inverse itself. So, this one is the quasi Newton scheme. So, also observe that if I have kept b k plus 1 s k is equal to y k, then because b k plus 1 is positive definite, we will have s k b k plus 1 s k is equal to s k y k. But now, this is strictly bigger than 0, because this is p d. So, in general we will always assume b naught to be p d, because that will help us, but if even if you had not assumed p d, you could have still replaced the gradient by some Hessian by some matrix and could have got this equation. Okay, but we will just continue that we are only taking symmetric p d matrices, all these b k's are symmetric p d matrices. Now, the interesting thing that we really uh, need to look in here is that uh, now this would mean that this is strictly bigger than 0. So, this is sometimes called the curvature condition. Which is guaranteed when B is positive definite, which is not guaranteed uh, when it is not. So, when f is strongly convex such a thing would actually occur, but uh, the curvature condition holds
So, this goes as your homework for this part. So, essentially now observe that if I take d k is equal to minus b k inverse grad f x k, where b k is symmetric p d, symmetric positive definite, then d k is a descent direction. then d k is a descent direction in the sense that if you write uh, grad f x k into d k, this is nothing but minus now because uh, b k is p d this inverse is also p d positive definite. So, this part without the minus would be strictly greater than 0. So, the whole thing this one is strictly less than 0 implying that. So, the important question here is not uh, how uh, important question here is how do I update the matrices B naught. So, if I know B naught say usually the B naught the starting one is the identity matrix because we know that it is anyway positive definite. Then I have to go no, go from B naught to B 1, B 1 to B 2 and so on B k to B k plus 1 and so on. Shall I stop? The question is how do I make this updates? So, how to make an update from B k to B k 1, B k plus 1. The question is how to do this and then if I want to do this, this B k plus 1 also has to remain this one has to remain p d positive definite positive definite when I already know that b k is symmetric positive definite. Of course, it has to remain symmetric p d which I am not writing every time, but okay, like this I will write in short that now how do I find that right. So, cut karo formats. Now, suppose I want to get a new B, I know the B k and I have to get a new B. So, what should that new B do? The new B should at least be symmetric and satisfy and satisfy the same sort of equation that is basically I am expecting the new b k plus 1 the same sort of thing that we had just figured out. So, this is the equation b k plus 1 has in terms with x k and y k. So, k plus 1 and k is linked through this so called second equation. Now, what I am trying to say is that if I want to find a b k from b k if I want to find a b k plus 1, b k plus 1 must be symmetric and must satisfy the second equation or the quasi Newton equation. Now, what we want is that there should not be a huge change between b k and b k plus 1, because we want to also reduce our computational effort. If there is a huge change between b k and b k plus 1, then, then that is not fair. So, what we really do is we want to find b the b k plus 1 through finding a problem of minimization in terms of matrices. So, when I have a b k, so I now want to look into this particular kind of problem so i have to find the b this the b that will minimize this norm the difference between the norm which i will say what sort of norm we will use in the next class so i have to have this 
the new the BK plus 1 should be satisfying this the B and it has to has this. So, basically I, I want to now use this approach to choose my B. So, the thing is choosing different sort of norms I would be able to choose a different sort of B which will be all P D. So, tomorrow's class will discuss how to compute the B. And that would uh, again uh, take us back to the Karushkuntagar conditions and the free zone conditions that we have learned. So, and we will talk in detail about the type of norms etcetera that is used here. So, we will now try to solve it maybe we will look, look into first a more simplified version of this, but then try to apply it here or part left as homework. So, the question is now how to compute the B and that is exactly what we are going to discuss in the next lecture. Thank you very much.